Our last video in this section is about other gas laws. You're going to determine the number of particles of substance using Avogadro's law, identify, identify the diffusion of gases using Graham's law, which is, you don't need to know these names, but, and determine the partial pressure of gases in a gaseous mixture for Dalton's law. So Avogadro's law is saying two different gases at the same temperature, volume, and pressure have the same number of particles inside. So notice these are two different gases. If you don't know their symbols, any is neon like in a, a light, light sign, and then xenon is a completely different type of gas you wouldn't use in those signs. Notice their temperatures are both 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere in both pressures, and they're the same type of container, so the same volume, 5 liters, 5 liters. They both have five particles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because the particles themselves are itty bitty tiny, they seem itty bitty tiny, and since the temperature, pressure, and volume are the same, the space between them must be the same. So that means you're going to fit the same particles. An example of the questions that are really easy, say at the same temperature pressure, what sample has the same number of particles as a liter of O2? And all you're doing is really matching the fact that it says one liter of O2, so you need a liter of a different gas. So the answer was A, because it said one liter. Literally just matching. So you should be able to determine the number of particles in a substance using that law of matching. Graham's law of diffusion is just saying that Graham's gases always move from high to low concentrations, where they were to where they're not. So you need to see in the picture, all the green moved out to where the blue is. Technically, after a little while, the blue might even try to go into the container if it can fit. And we talked about that near the beginning of the video. And the last law was Dalton's law of partial pressures. The total pressure of a system of gas equals the pressure of each individual gas. So in the first system, you see oxygen's 159 and nitrogen's 593. And if you put them in the same container together, they add up. 159 plus 593 is 752. They combine their pressure. So an example of what you might see is if the total pressure of a container is 3 and it contains an atmosphere of oxygen and 0.5 of nitrogen and 0.75 of methane, What's the pressure of the remaining gas? So you can say that what normally would have happened was I would have added 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.75 plus something to get our x and figure out what the x is by subtraction. So notice that in three atmospheres was the first pressure um, total. Pressure 1 is 1 atmosphere, pressure 2 is 0.5, and pressure 3 is 0.75. We need to figure out the rest, the dot, dot, dot. So if we subtract them out, we get an answer of 0.75, the remaining gas. So uh, here's another example. What is the total pressure of a container of gases if it contains 1.5 atmospheres of um, nitrogen, 2.1 of oxygen, and 1.35 of carbon dioxide? Let's see if you can answer this one. So it's as simple as adding them together. So the 1.5 is the first pressure, the 2.1 is the second uh, pressure, and the 1.35 is the third. There could even be a fourth and a fifth, but in this case, that was all that was there. We add them together to get a total pressure of 4.95. Now, technically, for sig figs, when you add, you should go by the least decimal places, so I would have rounded this to 5.0 atmospheres. At this point, you should determine the number of particles of a substance using Avogadro's law, talk about the diffusion of gases, and how the partial pressures of each gas add up.